Hi, welcome to Just Stuff. And today I'm going to be looking at a Go package called Go Chart. Now, in the previous video, I showed you one called Go Chart, and I showed you how fairly easy it was to create some simple charts. Um, this package I'm going to show you, I like a lot more, and you're going to see why. It's also fairly easy to use, but it just come with a lot more out of the box and so on. And so let me try and make this quick. And so in order to do that, um, I'll be going a little bit fast, but at the end of the day, I want you to learn stuff. So I'm not going to be going so fast that you're not going to be learning anything. I'm going to make sure to, as usual, I stick to my style that I like, which is a ton of examples, examples, and each example does one thing, but we'll go a little bit fast. Now, while I'm starting up my Visual Studio Code Editor here, why don't you just go hit that like and subscribe button for me, please. If you haven't done so already, please like the videos, like all the videos. Um, it's feedback for me. It helps me out with the Go algorithm. Also comment on the videos. Let me know how are you enjoying the material. You like what you're seeing. You don't like it, whatever. Just comment and like, and definitely subscribe if you haven't. Okay, so I have my Visual Studio code up and I'm gonna start off where we left off because I'm gonna reuse some of that code from the previous example. So what I'm gonna do is go back to example four, grab our last example, which was exercise four, and then copy it to our um, episode five here and call it example one. Okay, so I'll make sure to go to my example, my episode five directory, just so we are ready to run some code. So let's see. Um, this is what we had and we're, like I said, we're using go charts, but we're not going to be using any of that today. So I'm going to be taking this out, getting rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this also, and I'm going to cut down the number of items that we use in our charts to 50. Um, that's going to be a little bit easier to see than, um, if we have too many things, um, what else am I going to get rid of? Oh, since we're not using go charts, um, I'm going to get rid of this. All right. I'm still going to leave the right into the file and I'm going to get rid of style because, well, we don't know if the chart and library you're going to be using is going to use um, that style for text, for title and so on, but we still need these functions for generating data. Okay, so what are we really using? And forgive me, um, I'm going to have some background noises. Some of it is going to be from within the home. Some of it is going to be from right outside my window. I'm very close to the streets. I apologize in advance. I'm just trying to ignore some of that extra background noise. So let's go to go.dev. And if you type e charge here, and you'll get immediately a number of results. And if you just click on this, the very first one, go e charts, it takes you here. You can also open up a tab to the GitHub project. And then you can see it how there's an HTTPS website here. I would strongly recommend that um, you go over there. Now, if you scroll along here and you look, you can see it all. Again, like I said, out of the box, they just give you a ton of charts um, for you to play with. And now, the one drawback here is most of the code and documentation is written in um, Chinese. So you might want to use either your web browser, Chrome web browser, for example, that if it stumbles on a page with some Chinese, it will offer to translate it for you, or you might want to use your phone or um, with Go Translate. You can go here, and this is what I'm talking about. Um, it's going to offer me, and I can say always translate, and then I can put English, and you can see now it translates some of that text for me. and. This is not going to work everywhere, as you will see, like if I click on get started here, um, you'll see, okay, that first page there got translated. But then if I go to something like bar chart, for example, you see some of the text within the examples don't get translated or even some of the text here because, well, I don't know. Um, Chrome is not able to clearly um, determine, um, you know, English and Chinese when it's together like that. But anyway, uh, we're going to start off with a line chart. So here's the line chart example. And let's just jump back into the code um, to get started. So I'll go back here on this page and I'll click this copy button and then come here and for imports, well, imports, I'll just paste that. And then we'll use charts from now on. 
So what is the easiest way to create a chart? Well, like I said, we still have our values. So for example, we'll start off with one um, example. So let's get rid of that. And so we have some XY value and let's create a line chart. So we'll do that and we say charts that and we see bar charts and so on. And you could see line and um, there's a struct, but there's also a function that allows us to just create a new line chart. And we'll enter that and we don't know anything about the options yet. So let's ignore that. This is basically the object, the line object struct object that we need to create a chart and now we can say line that and again very straightforward look at this add x very clear what you're supposed to do here add x and it takes one parameter in this case we can imagine that oh, these are x values and so we'll just add our x values so i don't know why i'm not getting um, code completion and then we can do line that add y and so Y takes a few more parameters, but the first one is name. You can imagine for, you can be able to plot on this line chart, multiple um, Y data against the same X. And then you're going to be able, able to give each one a label. So why don't we do that? So let's um, call this one, uh, huh. what name should we give this one? Let's call it, so get data one, this function get data one. Is the one that returns sign so let's call it sign of x as our um, label for this piece of data and here's our, our data point so i'm going to ignore all the option and just say y1 y1 values uh, y1 values okay and there we go so we've added to our line chart we created a new line chart we added the x value added the y value with a label and now it's time to render this data. Um, that is fairly easy. We have a file already. And so the way this work with Go eChart is very similar to how charts we, um, the other previous library use it. So we have a line and we could call a render function and we can say, where do we want to render it to? We don't get to pick any type of output format or anything. We just call render and give it a IO writer. And that's all there is. So <laughs> literally, um you know four lines um render lines and those three lines so let's go uh we're supposed to be moving a bit fast today so let's go see what happens so let's do go run example one and then we do main that go and it runs and we get a file let's see here we have this output the png file if we click on it we'll see hmm, the editor doesn't able isn't able to open this for some reason let me do cat output that png and hmm this actually is not png file it's an html file i know one of my browser was uh, my editor here um was unable to open it because it thinks it's a picture and it can't open picture so let's change this to html and um, if i click on it again now we see it oh there's a ton of stuff here for html all right i'm gonna close this so that's fine it means then that i can open this in my web browser I can say something like open um, output.html. Now notice immediately one of the things that I complain about at a chart is that we didn't have the numbers on the x-axis. We didn't have any idea what the numbers are on the y-axis. We didn't have the um, tick marks on the any of the axes, and we get that immediately with this. Not to mention we get this nice. Um, thing that indicates um, the label for the line we're working with and we also get at each data point we have um, some you know dots here that we can over over or click on but you just need to over over it and it tells you the and the actual value at that data point so immediately this is a lot better than what we had before and look at this when you over over this it shows you which set of data points are on this graph and so you can click this to get rid of it and click it to show it so immediately right out of the box with four lines look how much more we got okay so let's keep moving so one of the things you might want to do is that what we did before and that is to add a title to the entire chart and so we can do that too we can say line that title which is just a string or we could say this is line one for example or you know chart one for example i don't know what we want to call it um my charts 
and if we save that and now that we know that oh this is actually not writing a png file we could change this to html we can say this is actually in html format instead of png and we save that and then now we will clean up remove the output file and then we will do go rerun this example we just do hit refresh as you can see now we have my chart title there and okay great that's expected okay let's move on to example two now so what do we want to do in exercise two notice this is writing out to an html file instead of writing out an html file and we have to always open it and so on why don't we just in go we can write a web server very easily and so we can just have a web server and we go to that URL for our web server is listening and we just write the result there instead. So what I'll do is I would say, let's put this in a function. So let's, that's main and let's create a function called, maybe let's call it render page, for example, to create a page. And what it does in render page is that we have, um, we get our value and we do everything we need to, to create our chart. So for example, we'll get a new line, all this other good stuff. And we're going to still write it to a writer, but that writer we're going to write it to will have to be an HTTP write response writer instead. So we could make this a handler by just simply saying W HTTP that response writer. And so there we go. But we don't care about the request. So usually you type R star HTTP that request. Um, this guy, um, something like that. Now, since we're given a I.O. writer here, well, we don't need to worry about creating a file, closing a file, and we can simply say, let's try and render it to this writer. Okay, so that takes care of that. And now this variable ERR is showing up for the first time, so we'll do that. And then we'll go back up here, and the way that we create a web server, web server is with two very simple lines from the HD package, and we're gonna say handle func, and then we're gonna say, what's the pattern we wanna handle? And that would be like slash, for example, on our handle function is gonna be this one that we just wrote called render page. That's it. And then now that we register our handle function, we simply need to just listen and serve. And so we'll listen on, uh, let's use a variable port, and then we'll say nil. And so for variable or port is gonna be equal to the string colon 8080. So let's listen on port 8080 instead. And that's all. That's all we need to do. Those about four lines of changes or something like that. And now if we go back and we rerun and we do example two instead, and we run this, well, it's running. Uh, we don't know, know that yet, but it is there and listening. So let's now go to our web browser and we'll just do a reload on localhost colon 8080. And as you can see, we get the same result. So all we've done really is move this from being on a file, in a file, to being a web server. And that's awesome that we could turn this into a web server. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Like I said, I'm gonna be moving pretty fast, but that doesn't mean that well, we don't have time for you to hit the pause button and then leave a comment, hit like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're enjoying the material, Please do your part. I'm doing my part to bring you material that you can enjoy and learn from. Please help me by doing your part by hitting the like and subscribe. All right, let's move on to example number three. Now here we are in example number three. So what is it we want to do? Well, um, I sort of want to organize my code a little bit better. For example, here I start a web server and um, I have to wait until you know it completes. I don't have a message to, to show the user that oh, they should go to any website or uh, to which link they should go to. Plus, I would like to be able to start the web server in a Go routine and then have the Go routine signal when the web server exits for whatever reason. And the way I can use my main function to either kick off some more work, maybe go get some more data, so I could start organizing things better. So what I'll do instead is I'll use a Go um, routine to say, let's you kick off a Go routine to um, run our web server. But we know that if we actually did it like this, it, before our Go routine actually have time to run, 
it would just exit and return because it's just a function and maybe it wouldn't get time to start up. So what we really need is to have like a wait group. So now that we have a wait group, we can say, all right, um, when you finish, then you do wait group that done. And before we kick off the go routine, we should actually say, um, well, maybe actually, well, yeah, we need to say wait group that add. Come on, one. And then maybe at the bottom here, I can do something like um, get the host name for our computer. All right, so that kicks that off into a go routine, but I can get the host name. And I don't care about error message, and I can say OS that host name. Um, basically, call this function to get the host name. It returns an error, which we don't care about. And I could say log Russ, you know, um, info log, for example. Um, host name, and then port that we already have. Well, what I might also want to do is just put this in its own function. So why don't I just write a function here? Um, let's call it, let's say start web server. And I'll put that down at the bottom and then I'll just drag this whole bit into that function like that. And so, all right. Now the only thing left is for me to call the web server here. Start web server. All right. So I like this. I like this a lot. So in main, we come in, we parse our command line, command line options. We start the web server, kick that off in a go routine, and um, now we do this. And of course, at the end there, we don't want to exit the program yet. We want to do wait group that wait. And so we will only exit once the web server or any other set of go routine that we kick off. We can use the same wait group and make sure all our stuff is synchronized. All right, sweet. So let's run example three. And so. So again, small changes, but as we go along, uh, so nice, this is really good. So I can see it all I'm running here and then I can also click this button and there you go. I, I loaded my chart. So again, we didn't do anything with the chart so far. So far we just organized the code in the last two example. All right, let's get back to now that we have this basic um, code as I think fairly nicely organized. Let's go back to look at some more charts. All right, so this is example four, and it's quite literally the same code as example three right now. I haven't changed anything at all. And so if you remember for our charts though, so let's go to this render page. Um, in our previous example, one of the things that we wanted to do is to say that oh, we want the lines to be a little bit smooth. As you can see, they're kind of jagged here. And this is very easy. Um, there are a couple ways of doing it with go e chart. You can set a global option on the line itself or which means that every chart that you add to this, every, um, <laughs> well, I'm going to reuse the thing. So we have a line chart and you can add a number of, um, you know, charts to it. And so every chart can have its own option. So some could be smooth and some not. And, or you could do a global thing where all of the lines are smooth. And so, but I'm going to do it per line here. And the way we do this is we call charts that, and we get a line option, right? There's option for this line, it makes sense. And then there are a number of things that you can specify. So if we take a peek inside of here, there are like four properties and you can you have smooth, you have stack, you have step. And we'll see step later, but for now, we'll do smooth and we'll set smooth to true. It's a Boolean. And then that's all we're gonna do for exercise four. And let's go now, control C and run that. And it's running and let's go back here and refresh. And you can see now, oh, it's put out our charts a little bit. Awesome. Again, this was not something we can do very easily in the previous chart. Okay, let's keep moving. Time's a wasting. Um, hit the subscribe button and comment, by the way. So, okay, um, I've copied exercise four and I've called it exercise five, but I haven't changed anything um, just as before as always. And so here's what I'd like to do. If you remember what I just said is that we can have multiple line or drawing on the same chart. So why don't we do that? But instead of packing more of them within here, I like to organize things a little bit better. I will leave the render page as the place where we add all the lines. And instead I'll create a function that says, oh, let's um, 
just return the details for a particular line, right? That we want to put on a chart. So what I'll do is, uh, let's put it right up here. I'll create a function and I'll call it, let's say create line, create line. And let's call it one because I know that I will want to do some other ones. And what this is going to return is a pointer to charts that line, right? And so within here, I'll hide all the detail of creating a chart. So this is going to go up in there like that. And then at the end of it, um, I'll do um, return, return um, line. So something like this. What should our render page do now? Well, why don't our render page, if we have, let's say, line one colon equals to create line, this would do the exact same thing, right? And um, I don't know why this is complaining here. Line not defined. Oh, I have it as a line. Okay, so line one. What I'll do is I'll create a second chart. Maybe I should just call this chart instead of line. Uh -huh. Yeah, let me call these charts. So let me call this chart one, and then let's call this chart two. Okay. And so now this is chart two. Um, let's do this chart one. And then um, it's a line, and then, or maybe I just call it start, chart one. And then let's create two charts. So this is chart two. And then, of course, I have this second function here, which is called chart two. And both of these are returning lines as their charts, right? But remember what I said is that you can have multiple um, lines on the same chart. And so here we were calling, you know, line one. Let's call um, get data two now to get the random data. If you remember, or oh, get data two is a set of random data. Get data one was the sign of. So we'll get some random data. And um, since it's line two, this is actually random. Let's call it random points one. And um, I don't care so much about the title. We could still have it. Actually, let's keep it. Um, my charts two, for example, let's call it that. And my chart one. And I can't move fast to save my life. <laughs> okay. And then let's get some more data points. And so I'll get a second set of data points here. And we don't care about the X values because this is going to stay the same. And these are not new, so I get rid of this. And I also want to add them to the same chart, right? So remember, a line here is like a chart. I should really be calling this thing chart, like line chart or something like that. That's what I should really have called it, line chart. And let's call this random data points two. And yep, yep, yep. And maybe instead of doing smooth, let's do step, right? And yep, call it true. And so, yep, there we go. And then now here's the thing, which one should we render? We have two charts and we want to render them on, we can add all these lines together, but what I want is two separate charts. And then my second chart actually have two lines. So what we can do is create what's called a page. So we said page colon equal charts, that new page and we don't give it any options. Uh, that's what I like with this, it's pretty easy. And then we do page that add. This is super, super easy. And I can say chart one, and then I can say chart two. That's all there is to it. And now that we have a page, what we can do is just say page that render instead. Just like that, right? So instead of rendering each individual line, we add the, the every instead of rendering each individual page, chart, we add the charge to a page and then just render the page. And let's see how things change. So this is example five. So we go there, we do five, we run this, and it's still, you know, doing its thing. And we come here and let's say refresh, for example. And notice how my chart one at the top is this sine wave, the sinusoid, and everything that I said before still remains true. But then notice how we have a second chart here and we have random points. We can hide that, remove it. We can hide and remove this. And notice for the random points, they're still smooth because I use smooth. Um, or oh, hide this guy and turn on this. And then here we have random points also, but I decided to use step instead of smooth. And notice the difference. And I still get my little um, handlers there that um, 
activate when I hover over them. I think this is pretty sweet. And um, of course, I still have my tick. And you can see how we could put multiple charts on the same page. And we can also put multiple graph within the same chart, right? And so there you go. All right, so let's move on. And the final example is, I'm gonna show you a couple of things in this one example, but there are a lot more. And please do go through and check out all these charts that are available. I didn't play with a 3D one, but I played with a number of the other ones and they were fairly easy to use. The other one I'm gonna show you is a bar chart. I'll just show you very how easy that is also to use. Like, once you see the pattern, like, yeah, you, you get it. All right, so let's um, go back to code. And so let me just bring up example six, which is just gonna be copy in example five. So here I'm in example six, I haven't added anything, but this is the first thing I'm gonna add to help save us some time. I'm gonna add this function, so save that. And notice all this function is, is I call it line three, it returns a line chart and so what we do is we call create um, chart. Let's call create chart one because it really doesn't matter. Because remember, our create chart one is not doing a whole lot other than getting some data and then adding it to the x and y axis and giving it a title. So that's nothing interesting. And then all we do is we overwrite the title by calling it, you know, chart three. Let's call it chart three. And then here are some other things I could do. So for the line, I call that chart, I can add some options for the series. And one of the things I can do is say, well, can you automatically calculate the average for me? And I can also show some text label um, for those values. And so, um, again, just follow the documentation, but it's just some other things I wanna show you. Um, and so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but let's, Control C and let's run that example and let's refresh. And so you should expect to see, uh, let's see here, um, example six, am I running example six? Oh, I did not call my example six here. So I need to call chart three and I need to add it of course to the page. Um, so let's do that three and then save that and then let me go back here um, you see any error oh I call this line three so save that and then go back here and let's rerun rerun this we can clean up actually and then if I go here and I refresh, scroll down, there is my other chart. And because this is a sine wave that I'm doing, well, that's the average. But if I was to use something else, let's say um, my chart tree was to use data from, um, you know, data two, for example. So let's say I copy this, for example. And instead of doing this, I did this. And save this, and I call it random points, and then this chart tree, and then um, let's control C and rerun real quick. And I still have to show you the example with the bar chart. And so there you go, right? Um, so random points, and then here you see my um, my average line is being displayed, right? And so, yeah, it allows you to quickly do things like add averages and max and min. Um, definitely check out the documentation. The last example I wanna show you is how to add a bar chart. So again, I'm just gonna paste the code in for the bar chart and then you, the code is all available. So again, remember, um, I have all this code available in the repository, you can go take a look at it. So imagine I wanna plot some data for the last six months. So I have, um, here we are in April when I'm recording this, um, the beginning of April. So let's say I had some data, some sales data for, for March already, cause we finished March and I have some sales data for the past six months, okay? So let's imagine that's gonna be on our X axis, those are the months. And then I want some data to represent how many items we sold. Well, I have a 
function called random int and all it does is take how many months I how many data points I need and so that's what I calculate calculate here as the number of items and then what it does is it generates random number uh, from 0 to 50 and so I'm going to add two um, data columns you could think of them to my bar chart one is going to be what we estimated right how much we're going to sell that month and then what we actually sold but again, these are just random numbers between zero and 50. And so let me add to this guy here. Let me get my create bar function call, and then I'll call this bar. And then similarly to my page, I'm just simply going to add the bar chart. Okay, because you just add a chart and that's it. And so maybe I should have made this exercise seven, but oh well, uh, it's already done. I don't feel like we'll change anything now. And then if we rerun this and then we refresh, as you can see, when you scroll along here, here's your bar chart. And how easy was that to do? But a bar chart has other things. You can click this to download, use Google Translate. Um, I don't know your phone or something to figure out what this, but this is basically download, save an image. It saves it as PNG. If you click this, it's activated. As you can see, it's light blue. And so now I can use this for zooming in. Let's, let's say I had a lot of data that I wanted to zoom into. And then here, note this one is activated to go backwards. And you could zoom in a few levels. So I could first um, click here. I could zoom in one level. Then I can zoom in, zoom in another level. And then I can just sort of go backwards. And this is to see that chart data as a table. And so there it is. Um, this is to refresh the data. But either one of these functions here, like get you out and get you back. I think this is like a refresh from the look of it. So I think that's pretty cool, pretty easy to use. And like I said, there are many other charts, but I just want to give you how easy this was. And we'll use this in our next exercise when we do the financial thing. That's how I got into this and with some ML stuff that I'm doing. So um, more to come on both of those fronts, but hopefully you've like what you've seen you hit the like and subscribe button you leave a, you left a comment already if you haven't please 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 do uh, take care stay safe